and <laughs> thank you. Hi, so welcome back. We are changing for the next hour to back to music content. Um, the next presentation is called Musical Avatar, visualizing your musical preferences. Um, probably all of you have an online avatar, or maybe not. Um, and I'm not sure if you have a musical one. And what is this one saying actually about, about you and your musical taste? And I'm very curious about knowing also how does the avatar of a person look like that listens, let's say, to Beyonce and Metallica at the same time. I think Mohamed Sordo will give us the best answer to that. Um, he is a postdoc researcher at the Music Technology Group of the Universitat Pompeo Fabra in Barcelona. And after his talk, Jody Janer will give another talk and then at the end, we'll have the questions and answers round for the two presentations. So, have fun. Stage is yours. Okay. Um, it works. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Mohamed and I'm, I'm from the Music Technology Group uh, at Pompeo Fabra University in Barcelona. And it's a, a research group of more than 40 researchers working on different research areas, including audio signal processing, which will be covered by my colleague Jordi. Uh, sound and music description, musical and advanced interaction. I don't know if you're all familiar with this uh, musical instrument called Reactable. We also work on sound and music communities and perform uh, performance modeling. So included in the sound and music description area is this uh, talk I'm, I'm going to give today. And uh, even though the title of the presentation is Musical Avatar, Visualizing Your Music Preferences, I will also talk about uh, music recommendation and especially content-based, like using audio information to recommend music to users. So, uh, introducing the first part, I will try to ask you some questions. How many of you have started conversation with new people talking about music? You can raise your hands. Um, and how many um, of you have uh, related your music preferences to your lifestyle when you were uh, adolescent? Like wearing big pants when you listen to hip hop or, or, or stuff like that. It's not, uh, it's not me. It's not just common sense. It's, um, it has been studied. There are several studies by the, the, the authors here showing or discussing the role of music in our lives. Um, basically, with the evolution of the World Wide Web, it has brought us new kinds of interaction and the rise of popularity of uh, social networks. In the case of music, we can use um, tools like MySpace, Last.fm, YouTube, or SoundCloud, where people um, listen to music, they post comments, they interact with other, other users, they they put tags to songs and even though that when we try to communicate um, our musical preferences to other users either we have the option to do it by describing it textually say I like um, hip-hop music but I don't like mainstream hip-hop music because it's uh, too superficial or whatever or using a system like Last.fm, which uh, gives a list of your most um, listened tracks, albums, and artists. But even though that, it's still a little bit problematic to give your information at a glance. Like someone wants just to, to see what are you in, in, in a picture. And that's why the concept of avatars. We want to use the the concept of avatars to present our musical preferences to other users. In the second part of the, of the talk, I will talk about music recommendation. Um, and basically, what is about recommendation? We normally, when, when uh, the, the internet appeared, we used to search for information. Like we use a text box and, and search for uh, I don't know, in this case for a track or an album or an artist. 
But what happens when there are hundreds of millions of them? And you don't know what you want to, to look for. That's why we, what we, we can use recommendation. So when we want to discover new things without knowing, knowing what we are looking for. And this, is, this was um, stated by Chris Anderson, the author of the book called The Long Tail. He said, we are living the age of information and entering the age of recommendation. So basically, recommending things, um, I don't know if you're familiar with this. Um, this is Amazon website. And here you can see some recommendations. So this is actually called collaborative filtering. And it's customers or users who have bought these books or have bought these books. They also bought this one or, or uh, favorite this other one. So we can use this type of information from different users, users that read the same book or bought the same book as us, but they bought other books. That's how they can recommend you new books or new items. We can also use other type of information like social tags. So for example, people that listen to the same music and they tag the, their music with the same tags, we can use this information to propose new uh, tracks. We can also use emotions, like if you're happy, sad. Uh, we can also use information about your activities, if you're studying, if you're uh, partying, if you're uh, driving, or spatial or temporal information. For example, what time do you, uh, you listen to music or where you listen to music or your social context and so on. The motivation of this talk is that if we don't have this information, if we don't have information about the user context, nor ratings, nor social tags, nor user plays, um, what are we going to recommend? Or how are we going to build a, the avatar for a user when we only have a list of tracks? Well, there is an alternative solution which uses content-based um, features, it extracts them from, from the audio and define similarity measures to recommend similar music. So this is ba basically the proposed system. Um, as you can see here, first we, we get a list of top tracks from Last.fm and from SoundCloud. It's just to, to name two uh, services that allow us to keep track of, of our uh, music listening behavior. We use this uh, information to uh, create a preference set, a list of music tracks, for example. We use this list to extract audio information from the audio files to build user models. And when we get the user models, we use them to recommend music or to summarize them and visualize this user model as an avatar. Um, Sorry that the screen is not very big and you cannot see the, the text here. Well, basically, I'm going in some detail for each sub block. So starting with data gathering, um, it just we use your last FM account name or SoundCloud. And then you decide, use my uh, favorite tracks or top tracks from last FM, 10, 20, you decide the number. And then from these uh, services, we get a list of of tracks, which is artist, title, and uh, a path to the audio file. So we need to have the audio file, otherwise we cannot do anything. And with this user preference set, we perform some uh, audio analysis. So basically, I'm just going to go very quick with this. We use uh, an in-house library to extract low-level information or audio features or descriptors from the, from the audio. And uh, these low-level features can represent spectral features, timber information, tonal, like the key, the BPM, beats per minute, onsets, and so on. But what's the problem of, of this information? What's the problem of these audio low-level features? Is that it's, it's really far from what people uh, really understand. The signal features are here in the bottom layer, is what machines are able to extract from the audio. 
and hum this is what humans understand. I don't know if you can read here. Well, it says personal identities, emotions, memories, understanding. It's really far from timber, pitch, frequency. Not normal users, normal people don't understand about pitch or, uh, or energy. So what's the intermediate step? The intermediate step is to try to obtain content objects like genres, moods, instruments, to say that a, a music track is a, a rock music featuring a guitar with a, it's an aggressive style. This type of information is better understood by humans than um, the low level features. So what we do in this case, we try to infer this information from the extracted information from the machines. So basically the idea is that from low level descriptors, these timber spectral features, we use some machine learning and we extract information related to genres, moods, instrumentation, and other types of high level descriptors, like if the, if the track is danceable or not, if it's for party, if it's vocal or uh, instrumental, if it's bright or dark. And more in detail, what it does actually is just takes the signal, the audio signal, computes some frame level, it goes frame by frame from the audio and extracts features. These are just numbers. And we summarize these numbers, these all frames, just in a vector of means, standard deviations, whatever, and then use these vectors to classify and to learn if, the, if this music track is uh, about what type of genre, what type of mood, what type of instrument. Actually, the output of these classifiers is also numbers. And we can uh, look at this as um, a feature vector. Once we have these feature vectors in here, we are able to use them to recommend music in this sense. So let's think that these uh, feature vectors are points in a multi-dimensional space. And we just say that, for example, if we have these three tracks, these are your uh, recommendation sources, your, your favorite tracks or the tracks that you listen more often. And those are the music tracks that are close to them in the space. You, you, you use them to recommend to the user. So this is basically, it's a really simplistic uh, approach to recommend music. It's based on audio similarity. Then for the visualization, uh, getting back to the diagram, and we add this information here. Once we have the semantic descriptors, we summarize them to obtain a single uh, vector, which we call the musical preference representation of the user. It's a normalized vector, and with this vector, we just map the values of this vector to different uh, parts of the, the avatar. Basically, the summarization is standardizing, normalizing the values and computing the mean, and then assigning graphic elements to a neutral avatar. It's a naked avatar, and we keep putting new elements depending on the mapping from the, the feature vector and the graphical elements. So this is just, it's the same user, but using different strategies. For example, if the value is 0 0.4, we have, uh, for example, hair, but in this case, there are three values, so we don't put hair. And the third case is when you use the continuous values from zero to one. Basically, this is the, the approach. So for example, for this uh, female um, user, when the party uh, value, the party semantic descriptor is one, we add this um, background. When he has electronic metal dance value of one, we add hair and we keep adding elements with um, a set of rules that we define. And this, in this way, we can get a, an avatar. So I'm not going to talk more. I'm just going to show you a demo. 
and it's about uh, the musical avatar. You can use it all. It's this website, music.upf.edu. Uh, let me just play the, the demo. Basically, we write in the username in Last.fm and SoundCloud, and then. So I use 10 tracks from SoundCloud and Last.fm. So you get this avatar for this user. And then you also get a list of uh, recommendations for, for him. Actually, one of the, the good things here is that it, it explains you why it recommended this song. It says, I recommended this song because you like this type of track and it's similar to it. So it's one of the, the good things about recommendation is that you explain to the user why you have recommended that, that kind of music. I'm going to see another user and then I, I'll stop. Is a female user. She likes totally different music from the the previous one. Um. Mina tankar på runt kom igen tänk du måste ta dig ut men när det är en slut. Anyway, I didn't want to go into details of all the experiments we have done in this uh, research. I just wanted to give you a generic uh, view of, of what we have done, because I don't know uh, the, the audience if they are familiar with the research academic. So uh, I, th I hope that you all understood uh, the presentation and uh, that's it for me. Thank you very much. I think I've been very efficient. You can go if you want. Come. You said me not. You said me not. Thank you. Moha, and we'll hear from you probably later. <laughs> so, we'll just have a short five minute break for the setup, and then we'll continue. <laughs> 